Hello, today I'm sharing two cards using a different colored cardstock. Just from changing the color of my card base, the card has a different vibe to it. So for my first card, I'm starting out with a piece of black cardstock. Using a Honeybee Stamps Hexagon stencil, I'm taping it down using some painter's tape over my craft mat. I'm also using Nouveau Glimmer Paste in Moonstone, and this is actually the only color I have, but I wanted to use oranges and yellows, so I'm using Distressings to create my own colors. I also wanted to create a gradient effect with the Glimmer Paste, so first color I'm using is Carved Pumpkin. To create my own colors, I'll smush my Distress Ink directly on the craft mat, and I'll scoop some Glimmer Paste from the jar and mix it thoroughly with the palette knife. I'm spreading a thin layer of the first color at the bottom of the card. And then the next color will be Wild Honey, and I'll be repeating the same steps for both cards. And once I have that second color mixed, I'll also blend the colors a bit so that it has a smooth transition for the gradient effect. And you want to make sure that you've mixed the colors thoroughly with the glimmer paste because then if you don't, you'll have parts of the glimmer paste where it just has more color and it's not even. So when I got to the last color, which was mustard seed, and I blended everything together and put it onto the black cardstock, I realized that the entire panel almost looked like the same color. It just looked a bit yellow and you couldn't really see the gradient effect to it. And so I really didn't like it. And once I took off the stencil, it just actually even looked green. And so this wasn't exactly what I was imagining in my head when I started doing this. So I actually did not like it. So I moved on and pulled a piece of white paper and repeated the same steps. And this time I decided to only use two colors so that one, the gradient effect would be more effective and two, it wouldn't just look like one single color. So for this card on white, I'm using carved pumpkin and mustard seed. And definitely on white cardstock, the colors are more true to the distressing colors. And I was able to get more of a gradient effect. So you can see that it's much darker and more orange on the bottom. And for the top portion, it looks a lot more yellow. And so I was able to mix that and blend it where I was happy of how it turned out. And it definitely did not look like the black cardstock version. So once I finished blending the glimmer face on the stencil and I was happy with it, I immediately cleaned off my craft mat and the palette knife and took that stencil and my supplies to the sink just to rinse off with soap and water. And because the glimmer face has chunks of glitter, that really sticks to your items. So you want to clean it off immediately before it dries. So for the rest of the card, I'm using images from the Honey Bee Stamps Busy Bee set and I already stamped and cut out a bunch of the images from the set. And it was easy to mass color these images. I colored the bees and the leaves all the same colors for both cards. For the flowers though, I decided that I wanted to use a different color scheme for each card. As always, I'll have all the colors I use listed in the description below. And I'll play a little music while I'm coloring.
Once I finished coloring these images, I die cut out and enjoy sentiment off camera. I had gotten this as a freebie from Honeybee Stamps a while ago. I also wanted to use different color schemes for each card for the sentiments. For the black cardstock card, I'm stamping the sentiment using Versa Mark ink and heat embossing in gold. For the white cardstock card, I'm using yellow cardstock and stamping in black ink. I decided to use Versafine ink so I can add clear embossing powder on top. I just wanted to heat emboss the black sentiment so it would be a bit shiny. For the black cardstock card, I wanted the Joy sentiment to be gold to match the smaller sentiment. So I used Versamark ink on the entire sentiment and I dipped it into the gold embossing powder and repeated the step twice. The first time I had heat embossed the entire sentiment, it wasn't covered. So I wanted to make sure that all the little parts of that sentiment were heat embossed in gold. And once I finished preparing the sentiments, I'll trim down the smaller sentiments into a strip as well as trimming down the card panel to four and a quarter by five and a half. And for all these images, I decided that using Tombow Mono Multi Glue was the best medium to use. I figured that the glue could get into all the nooks and crannies of the glimmer paste since it's a bit bumpy. I think it works a lot better than double-sided tape in this instance. I place an acrylic block on top of the images as I'm gluing it down, so it gives it a bit of weight to make sure that the image is being glued to the panel. I noticed that if I didn't add the acrylic block sometimes, the image wouldn't stick to the panel to dry because of the texture from the paste. So for the flowers, I'm placing them around the corners of the card. And once I finish that, I'll move on to the middle area where I place the sentiment. For the smaller sentiment, I'll trim it down further to a rectangle around the words. And once I was happy with the placement of the sentiment, I'll add three little bees around the middle. And I even used one of the bees as a dot above the letter J. And I'll repeat the same process for the black cardstock piece. I started adding the images and realized I didn't trim down the panel yet. But the only reason I ended up creating two cards was because I didn't like how the glimmer paste looked on the black card stock. Funny enough, after I was finished with both the cards, I liked the black card stock card more. In person, you can see the very subtle gradient effect a little bit better, and I think that the flower images in yellow really pop in front of that card panel. The images really tied the card together, and I think it's really pretty. It does go to show you that when you start a project and you don't like it, just see the card through. You might be surprised with what you end up with. I've learned that with a lot of cards I've created where I didn't like how it started, but I did like where it ended up. To finish off these cards, I'm attaching them to an A2 card base and trimming off the flowers that are hanging off the edge of the card. Once I do that for both of the cards, these cards are both complete. Thanks for stopping by for today's video. I hope you enjoyed both of the cards and I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye!